Alright guys, let's be honest. The titles of these worst animation ever videos have gotten meaner and less true every time I make a new one. Every new thing we look at from El Guinea is an increase in quality. By the time we're done, I'll be subscribed to him with notifications on like you should be to me. Hi again guys, and welcome back to me making easy money. We've been looking at enough of El Guinea's videos this year that people actively associate me with him. So much so that when he dropped his highly anticipated FNAF Security Breach musical, people were tagging me on Twitter to get off my ass and onto his dick. And hey, a month late to ride in that shit isn't that bad of a timetable, so let's give it a whirl, yeah? And if you enjoy this video, there will be this big card at the end that you can click or tap to take you to another one like it. When you do, it helps me out in more ways than one, if you know what I mean. Hee hee. Orphan hood rat. Sleep on the streets. Got a box for a house. And newspaper sheets. I haven't slept. My life's a wreck. So screw it. Sneak in If you've watched the other content I've made on El Hugeti's videos, you'll have noticed that the animation on this one has made a sonic spring jump in quality from those. This music video is from current year, and at some point in the last half a decade between making this and the FNAF World music video, Mr. Hugeni started outsourcing the animation side of the animated music video. I imagine it was in part because in the past, pieces of shit not unlike myself were mean to him about his animations, and also probably so he could dive balls deep into the music part. I can imagine that's like what he enjoys about the process the most, so I don't really blame him for that decision. The pizza plex. We're 15 minutes from closing. Some kids sneaking around backstage. You dropped the ball out there. Today. I don't have time, I'm starting to- Despite my praise for the animation, I can't get over the fact that whoever he hired just drew Vanessa's boobs as two stiff, perfect circles. That dress shirt is sticking to them like cling wrap. They are perched on the underside of the breast like a rock climber on a horizontal cliff face. Great. Oh man, she's a mess. Getting wild like a Karen, all crazy stressed. Crawl in my cake hole, I'll keep you safe. Sorry if it's cramped, you might start to change. Five Nights at Freddy's is undeniably responsible for so many fucked up fetishes in today's adult workforce. And as bad as it has gotten, I thought it would have topped off at a kind of compounding effect. That it would be like the more FNAF games that got made, the more the same weird turn-ons would get reinforced. But somehow, they always managed to step it up a notch. Like, how can you be the guy who thought of the idea of shoving the entirety of the player character's body into an anthropomorphic robot bear's sternum, one who I may add plays a sort of guardian mentor role for the protagonist, and not have the foresight to think to yourself, hmm, maybe this will have terrible consequences in five to ten years when our youngest player base comes of age. <laughs> You know how some people have a comfort TV show or comfort streamer? I've been referred to explicitly as some people's discomfort streamer, where they go to twitch.tv slash quite specifically to feel worse, but generally just that piece of media that somebody goes back to and can rely on as a kind of safety blanket from the realities of the world. Well, El Hugeni's auto-tuned singing voice is basically that for me. It's a voice that's been with me for like half my life, and it's the voice all my positive thoughts are set in. It's literally how my inner monologue speaks. Hearing it after a long time without it is like coming home after hours without shelter in a blizzard. I'm still fucking cold and dying of hypothermia, but give it a few minutes and it'll be gone. I would generally agree that the Pizza Plex should be destroyed, just burned to the ground. Like, I know we really like Five Nights at Freddy's in the real world because it's quirky and oh my god, the animatronics! But in the game world, isn't Fazbear's Pizza known exclusively for getting small children killed and having fuck tons of urban legends and horror stories surrounding it? Like, what's the in-universe explanation for how they got the funding to make a Disney World-sized theme park dedicated to the murder robot restaurant? I can't just leave. Vanny will hunt me forever. Is there a way we can both leave together? To survive, I'll need upgrades. Either Monty's clothes or Chica's voice. Can I hit and run on Roxy? Sounds fun. Give me her eyes, it'll help a ton. No, it's this is definitely in part my internet poison brain doing the talking, but let me show you one important piece of context that changes my entire interpretation of the word choice. Gregory, Roxy's only fan's password is in her room somewhere. Find it, Gregory. I, you, need it to escape, Gregory. I need Roxy's OnlyFans password, Gregory. I need to review it on YouTube to make thousands of dollars in ad revenue. Calling it a hit and run on Roxy with that clip in existence just completely destroys any possibility of me taking those lyrics as intended. That's not El Hugeni's fault. In fact, I think he's doing a pretty good job with this video so far. It's entirely my own character flaw, and I will not be working on it. In this joint, way 
They made Will Afton in this look like Spongebob when he's been severely dehydrated in Sandy's house. He's legit just some fungus wiring and metal rebar these days. That's not the spring trap I've come to know and love. And I mean the love part very literally. We are in a committed relationship. First, will more kids disappear? Yes. Then we are staying here. There's a kid Should be home back in town. I was a big fan of the endo section of the game. It was one of the only parts I didn't have a brain melting time just trying to slog through. And they've somehow been made creepier in this video's interpretation of them. They made the wires hanging out their necks into earrings. That's just not right to me, man. They look like little chode-sized sonic cock rings. There's something eerie about them. Also, I did not end up finishing this game, but you can watch me play the bit I did manage to get through on the second channel. But the point is, I do not know the whole story. I know there's more possible endings than Doctor Strange saw in Infinity War, but I don't know how you get to any of them. Because of that, I'm pretty sure this music video has spoiled the entirety of the game for me, and has also done what I consistently said these music videos act best as. The quickest way to get up to date on FNAF lore if you have no clue what the fuck is happening. It's good to know tit physics carry over no matter how many layers of clothing Vanessa is wearing. It just follows animated porn logic where every piece of cloth sticks to your body like a second skin. And I know, I'm sorry, I probably said way too many words in that last sentence. And I'm sorry, I know I'm talking about this particular thing way too damn much, but they are literally the exact same shape as her eyes, just enlarged. You say I'm staring at her boobs, which I am, but they're staring right back at me. Don't phaser bless my eyes, it really stinks. Glitch traps the one who's pulling all the strings. Watch your back, staff will rip you apart, then a finale will build. Vanessa's right on that one. It does more than just sting. It can also cause permanent eye damage. Those lasers are no joke, man. There's a reason it's a federal crime to point them up directly into the sky. Highly powered lasers can incapacitate pilots who are behind the wheel of aircraft. You wouldn't want to be responsible for the deaths of hundreds of people just trying to fly back to Milwaukee, would you? I do appreciate that El Hugeni has been expanding the voice cast and ambition of these videos. Like, I think he's, for the first time, the person we've heard sing the least in a song. The only problem with that is it demonstrates how many fucking leads above the rest of the performers he is. Like, the people doing Vanessa and Gregory's voices are clearly giving it their all, but they're barely talking on the beat. El Hugeni decided to sing the chorus of the song himself because he knew it was too important to let anyone else fuck up. Let's light the spark. Are Vanny and I just one and the same? These invisible CDs give credit to this claim. Become the best at Princess Quest. We'll live happily ever after. Escape the plaque. Those 15 seconds made my brain feel like it was getting bombarded inside of a particle accelerator. I don't know what happened, but it feels like they shoved roughly 5 hours of gameplay into 10 seconds of song lyrics. Like, I have passing knowledge of some of the shit in the game. Full spoilers here if you hadn't had it ruined by the rest of this video already. But you know, things like Vanessa and Vanny being the same. But the Ghost CDs, I only vaguely recall from being in Help Wanted, that VR FNAF game, which I also played on the second channel. And I have never even heard of Princess Quest. It sounds like a mini game a Call of Duty dev would sneak into the campaign as a bit. I am operating completely blind here. I'm sorry, guys. I like to think my FNAF lore knowledge is definitely above average when compared to the normal population, but even I have my limits. Um, that ball pit section actually isn't accurate, because the daycare attendant only becomes a serial killer when the lights are off. He's a pacifist when they are on, and they are very clearly turned on in this clip. I'm gonna use this as a segue to a soapbox for a very tangentially related topic. Uh, ball pits. Those things were metal as fuck as a kid. It was like swimming in a pool if you could pick up the water and throw it at other people's genitals. You could do it to your own if you really want to, I guess. That being said, they were not just ball pits. I'm willing to bet I've been immunized to at least a few diseases from crawling around that gender neutral bathroom that was the play pit at Chuck E. Cheese. You see what I mean about how it was a bad idea to shove a main character into a large father figure-like character's stomach? It's like the creators of this game are doing everything they can to actively make sure Vor lives on beyond my generation.
This is the only FNAF musical I can think of where the cast is canonically a fucking band. And this is the only time that really gets used or shown in the video. Right before they're murdered. It's used in the same way that every animatronic in the past has been in these music videos. To play an instrumental solo at the end of the song or after the chorus. It's by the numbers. And I can't help but feel like the potential of what could be done with the only canon animatronic band was sorely wasted. Anyways, that's all the pretending to care about what I talk about I can do today. That card I was talking about should be on screen now. If you enjoyed, be sure to drop a like like, and subscribe with notifications on. Remember, don't go after anyone I talked about in this video, because it's all meant to good fun, and you're weird if you do that. Anyways, this has been Quite, and please help me.